Namo Buddhaya Teruan Saranai, dear meritorious children. Today, we are going to do something different. Now, I know you are wondering where we are today. Today, I thought to take you on a little pilgrimage. So, all the way, we have come to Mihintalaya, the land, the place where we got the Supreme Buddha's Dhamma. We received the Supreme Buddha's Dhamma that was gifted by our great Arahant Mahinda. So today, we are going on a pilgrimage to visit Mihintale and see the places and pay homage to those places and be happy with them. So children, without much description, let's get into the pilgrimage. But before that, Let's pay homage to the Supreme Buddha and let's go for refuge to the Triple Gems and after observing five precepts, let's go on this beautiful and wonderful, interesting pilgrimage. Namo Buddhaya Teruan Saranai. Sadhu, Sadhu. Sadhu. Before observing five precepts, let's pay homage to the Supreme Buddha and let's go for refuge to the Triple Gems. Say with me. Namo tasse bhagavato arehato samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavato arehato Samma Sambuddhasse Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arehato Samma Sambuddhasse Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Sanghang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami Tatiyam pi buddhang saranang gachami. Tatiyam pi dhammang saranang gachami. Tatiyam pi sanghang saranang gachami. Sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu. Children, to observe five precepts, say after me. I observe the precept of abstaining from killing beings. I observe the precept of Abstaining from stealing. I observe the precept of abstaining from sexual misconduct. I observe the precept of abstaining from telling lies. I observe the precept of abstaining from taking intoxicating drinks and drugs. I follow these precepts for happiness in this life to rebirth in heaven and to realize the Four Noble Truths in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, 
Sadhu, Sadhu. Now children, we paid homage to the Supreme Buddha. We went for refuge to triple gems and we observed five precepts. Now we are going to go on our pilgrimage to see our teacher who gifted us this uh, Supreme Buddha's Dhamma, our great Arahant Mahinda. So join with me. Namo Buddhaya Teruan Saranaya. Children, when you visit Mihinthalaya, this is the first Chaitya or Pagoda you will meet. Now this place is very important for all of us. It is very important in two ways. The first importance of this place is, children, all four Buddhas who was in this Mahabhadra Kalpa or this great Ian has visited this place. Kakusanda Buddha, Konagamana Buddha, Kashyapa Buddha, and our great teacher Gautama, the Supreme Buddha, has visited this place. So, this great place is visited by four Buddhas. So, this is a sacred place. This is one of the great eight sacred places that is situated in Anuradhapura area. And those places we call it Atamasthanaya. So this is one of the places from the Atamasthana. That is the first importance of this place. And the second importance is to this place, to this sacred land, our great Arahant Mahinda arrived to Sri Lanka. This is the exact place that our great Arahant Mahinda arrived to Sri Lanka. Now you all have seen in the pictures, in the paintings, that our great Arahant Mahinda has arrived to the top of that mountain. But that is not the exact place that our great Arahant Mahinda arrived to Sri Lanka. The place that you see in the background, the area that the Chaitya is situated, is the exact place that our great Arahant Mahinda visited to Sri Lanka. So, this place is very important and this place is very sacred for all of us, all the Sri Lankan Buddhist children. So, when you have time or if you are in abroad, when you come to your motherland, you should definitely visit this place to pay our gratitude and to pay our homage to the teacher who introduced the Supreme Buddha's Dhamma to Sri Lankan people. And that is our great Arahant Mahinda. So paying gratitude, being grateful is a quality of noble people. So that's why from this Dhamma program that we have come to this place to pay our gratitude, pay our homage and show our gratefulness to our great Arahant Mahinda for the service, for the dedication that has done by him to the Sri Lankan people. So children, let's go near to the Chaitya and let's pay homage to our great teacher, Supreme Buddha. And there's a special place next to the pagoda. You will see a special chamber. In the chamber, on the floor of that chamber, there is a special stone and that is called the moonstone. And it is believed that it was the exact place. 
it is the right and exact place our great Arahant Mahid arrived to Sri Lanka. So this is the place that the King Devanam Pyatis and great Arahant Mahinda was met. This is the place where our great Arahant Mahinda preached Dhamma to King Devanam Pyatis. This is the place that King Devanam Pyatis and his 40,000 uh, royal followers went for refuge to Supreme Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. So this, is, this place is very important for all of us, all the Buddhist Sri Lankans. So let's pay homage to that place and collect many merits. Namo Buddhaya Teruan Saranai. Now children, we have come to a special place. This Bodhi tree that you can see in the background is very special for all of us. Because after the arrival of our great Arahant Mahinda, our great Arahant Mahinda preached Dhamma to the King Devanam Pietis, and he went refuge to the triple gems. Then the King Devanampitis invited our great Arahant Mahinda to his palace. In the palace, our great Arahant Mahinda preached Dhamma to the royal people or the royal queens. So they, they also went refuge by hearing the Supreme Buddha's teachings. Then with the faithfulness, by the faithfulness of those queens, they asked and they begged for the ordination uh, from our great Arahant Mahinda. Then our great Arahant Mahinda said that I cannot give you the ordination, but my sister Arahant Sangamitta is in India. If you invited her to come here and after that, we can give you the ordination for the ladies. So, when our Arahant Sangamitta came to Sri Lanka, there was a special thing that she brought from India to Sri Lanka. And that was the Jaya Sri Mahabodhi tree, the right branch of the Jaya Sri Mahabodhi tree, which which our Supreme Buddha was enlightened. So she brought the right branch of the uh, Jai Sri Mahabodhi tree to Sri Lanka. As soon as she planted the Jai Sri Mahabodhi tree in Mahameunava monastery, it was well rooted and well established in that place. Then our great Arahant Mahinda saw uh, one fruit of that Bodhi tree was fallen. Then our great Arahant Mahinda picked up that fruit of Bodhi tree and he planted it in a, another place. From that fruit, from that Bodhi fruit, there are another eight Bodhi trees emerged from that fruit. So they were the first eight Bodhi trees that were emerged from our Mahabodhi tree. So we call those Bodhi trees as Ashtapalaruha Bodhi Nvahansi. That means the first eight Bodhi trees that were emerged from the Jaya Sri Mahabodhi tree. So children, we are sitting under the shade of one of those eight great Bodhi trees. 
So this is situated right next to the Sela Chaitya. So we are so lucky to be here. It is very, it gives very pleasure and it, it is very calm and quiet and serene place. If you can, if you have time when, we, when you visit to Sri Lanka, if you are in abroad, when you visit to Sri Lanka, you should and you surely, you should visit this place and do some meditation, do some chantings. When you be here, it feels like very comfortable children. So, we are sitting uh, under the shade of our Mahabodhi, one of the eight great Bodhi trees that were emerged from the Jayasri Mahabodhi Vahasi. So, let's go near to our great Bodhi tree and pay homage to this Bodhi tree. Namo Buddhaya Teruvan Sarada. Now children, we have come to the relic chamber of our great Arahant Mahindra. In this relic chamber, we have so many relics of our great Arahant Mahindra. And there's a beautiful statue of the great Arahant, of our great Arahant Mahindra. And you, when you come here, you can see. And there are so many relics inside this relic chamber. So when you come to Mihintalaya, you should surely, you should visit this place and pay your homage to our great Arahant Mahindra. This is where, this is the place where we find the relics of the great Arahant Mahindra. So as paying gratefulness and being gratitude for our great Arahant Mahindra, we should, surely we should pay our homage by visiting this place and we should pay our homage to the great Arahant. And also children, next to this relic chamber, we can find a Sima hall, or the hall where our Mahasangha do the Uposatha. So we, in the next to the, uh, this relic chamber, we can, we can see a Sima hall. Now this Sima hall is very important because it was one of the first Sima halls that were ever built in Sri Lanka. And this Sima hall was built under the patronage of King Devanampetisa and by the guidance of the great Arahant Mahindra. So now let's pay homage to the, our great Arahant Mahindra and collect many merits. Now after that, we are going to visit a special place and that is we are going to visit to the Kuti of our great Arahant Mahinda where he resided. So let's go to that Kuti and see and pay our homage to our great Arahant Mahinda. Namo Buddhaya Teruan Saramai.
Now, children, we have come to see and visit the kuti of our great Arahant Mahima. Now, this kuti is a rock cave. It is a very simple place. <laughs> now, when we visit there, when we go and see there, we can see it's only a rock and it's a cave and it's very simple. And in that kuti, in that cave, there is a limited space. So, that shows us our great Arahant Mahindra lived a very simple life. Now, our great Arahant Mahindra was the son of the great Emperor Ashoka. He lived a royal life. He lived a luxurious life. But leaving behind all those comfortabilities, leaving, a, leaving behind a big wealth and abandoning the kingship, he was the prince that was uh, about to become the king, about to become the emperor of India. Abandoning all those things, putting aside all those comfortabilities, our great Arahant Mahim left the lay life and became a monk. As soon as he became a monk, he became an Arahant. He was very lucky to enter to, enter to the Arahantship. And out of compassion, on the Sinhala people, the people who live in Sri Lanka, our great Arahant Mahindra arrived to this place. And our great Arahant Mahindra, after that, 48 years, he spent in Sri Lanka, preaching Dhamma to innocent Sinhala people. Although he was, he lived a luxurious life, before becoming a monk. After the after he became a monk, after he, he, after he came to Sri Lanka, he lived in this simple kutu. There is only space for sleeping and to sit only. There's no space to even pause, even to stand children. So it is a very simple place and it is a very beautiful place. Now, when we go there, we feel, even for today, the Arahant mind, our great Arahant mind, live there. We feel that feeling. So, children, we are so lucky to visit these places, and we are so lucky to come and see and watch these places and pay our homage to our great Arahant mind. Now, we are coming this journey, children, as a gratitude or as paying gratefulness for our great Arahant Mahindra for the service that has done by him to Sri Lankan people because our great Arahant Mahindra gifted Sri Lankan people the most worthy gift that one can ever gift or one can ever give to another person and that is Supreme Buddha's Dhamma. So children, as paying gratitude to our great Arahant Mahindra, we, we came this journey to show you these places. Now I think most of you haven't seen this cave, this kuti of our great teacher. Our Arahant Mahindra was the teacher uh, for the Sri Lankan people of Dhamma. He was like the second Buddha, we call him Anubuddhu. Because he was like a Buddha to Sri Lankan people. So that's why we came here and pay respect to our great Arahant Mahindra. So now let's go and watch and pay our homage to our great Arahant Mahindra's Kuti. Namo Buddhaya Tirvan Saradhan.
children now we have come to mehindu sai that means in this sai in this chaitya in this pagoda the relics of our great arahant mahinda was carefully placed inside the relic chamber so during the excavations we found the great arahant mahinda's holy relics so those relics are carefully placed in the uh, relic shrine that down there you can see in the next uh, videos so children this uh, this chaitya or this uh, pagoda is under construction now under reconstruction uh, that is because of our lokuswami mahasi our lokuswami mahasi gave the idea to reconstruct this mehindu sai to pay uh, homage and to pay our gratefulness to our great arahant mahinda so this is under reconstruction in the near future uh, we will be able to come to this place and pay homage to a beautiful uh, pagoda of our great arahant mahinda so uh, when it is uh, finished when this uh, pagoda is uh, finished with the constructions uh, we can place the relics of our great arahant mahinda in the relic chamber of this pagoda so when you come to mehintalaya definitely you should visit this place this mehindu sai now so most of the people they come to mehintalaya and they just watch the places and go but they don't know what is this what is the importance of this pagoda this pagoda is so important important for all of us because this is the pagoda where our great teacher arahant mahinda's holy relics are placed so children whenever you have time or when you whenever you come to the motherland please visit this place and pay your homage and pay your gratefulness to our great arahant mahinda so now let's go and pay homage to our great arahant mahinda's pagoda namo buddhaya tervan saranai Now children we have come to Ambastala Mahasaya. This pagoda or this chaitya is very important because in this pagoda there is a very important relic of our great teacher Supreme Buddha. Now you know there are 32 great marks of uh, our great teacher Supreme Buddha. Uh, among those 32 great marks there is a special mark of our great teacher supreme buddha and that is there is a special hair relic between our great teacher supreme buddha's eyebrows i think uh, you all have seen in the buddha statue there is a special uh, hair relic between the eyebrows So that is what we call urna roma datu. So that special hair relic of our great teacher Supreme Buddha is situated or is it's carefully placed inside the dhatu chamber of this uh, pagoda. So it is one of the biggest pagoda around this Mehintale area. So that is why it is called Ambastala Mahasaya. Although we call Ruan Valley Mahasaya as Maha Stupa, there is another stupa that is called Maha Stupa, and that is this Ambastala Maha Stupa. So this is a very beautiful uh, stupa, and 
we can see uh, so many pagodas when we, when we come to this place. We can see so many pagodas. Out of there we can see Ruanveli Mahasaya and uh, we can see Jetavanarame pagoda and Abhegiriya pagoda, Mirisavatiya Tuparame. So many pagodas we can see from this place. So children, that's why I told you before, Sri Lanka is like a little Buddha shrine. There are so many relics of our great teacher, Supreme Buddha children. So in this pagoda we find the noble hair relic of our great teacher, Supreme Buddha. And out, of the, out there, we can, uh, when, when we consider about Ruan Valley Saya, we can find uh, the highest amount of uh, Supreme Buddha's relics in that pagoda. And there are so many uh, pagodas like that in this area. So we are so lucky to be here and uh, to visit here and see these pagodas and worship them and uh, be happy with those uh, merits. Children. So <clears throat> there's another place. Now in the background you can see a nice, uh, you can see a special place, a, a rock. Now I think you all have seen this rock uh, in the videos and the pictures. And there's a special story behind that rock. And that is, most of you, I think all of you know that our great Arahant Mahinda arrived on the top, arrived to Sri Lanka, to the top of that mountain. But it is not the truth, children. This is, that is not the place where our great Arahant Mahinda arrived to Sri Lanka. This place, this rock is known as Aradhana Gala. That means, after the arrival of our great Arahant Mahinda to Sri Lanka, uh, after the going refuge of our King Devanampiti sir went to the palace. So after his departure, our great Arahant Mahinda ordered the novice Arahant monk Sumana to invite all the deities, all the gods from heavenly world to listen them. So what our great Arahant Sumana, the novice monk Sumana did was, he went to the top of this mountain or the rock and invited to the all gods from the heavenly world by saying, I think you know this verse, Samanta Chakkavale Su Atra Gachantu Devata Sadhammang Munirajas Sunantu Sagamukkada. I think you all have heard about that, heard that uh, verses. So that verses was told by our Arahant Sumana, the novice monk Sumana, uh, on the top of that mountain. So you can see so many beautiful places and there is there are so many important places around these places. So we are so lucky to be here and see these places and uh, be happy with these places and we can recall the past, the history of our Sri Lanka and how our great Arahant Mahinda brought the Supreme Buddha's Dhamma to Sri Lanka. So children, from here, now we are going to end our little journey. So may all of you realize Four Noble Truths in this Gautam Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Children, now we have come to the session of meditation. Today, we are doing this meditation from a nice and beautiful place. This is a rock cave situated in the Mihikale forest. So it is very nice and it gives very pleasure 
to meditate in these places. It's very calm and quiet. So today, let's do loving kindness meditation. So get ready for the meditation and listen very carefully to my words. We are going to do loving kindness meditation. May I be free from anger. May I be free from evil. May I be free from jealousy. May I be free from physical suffering. May I be free from mental suffering. May I be well and happy. May I live in peace. May all the beings around me be free from anger. Be free from ill will. Be free from jealousy. Be free from physical suffering. Be free from mental suffering. May they be well and happy. May they live in peace. May all the beings in this village be free from anger. Be free from ill will. Be free from jealousy. Be free from physical suffering. Be free from mental suffering. May they be well and happy. May they live in peace. May all the beings in this city be free from anger be free from evil be free from jealousy be free from physical suffering be free from mental suffering. May they be well and happy. May they live in peace. May all the beings in this 
country Be free from anger Be free from ill will Be free from jealousy Be free from physical suffering Be free from mental suffering May they be well and happy May they live in peace May all the beings in this world be free from anger be free from illness be free from jealousy be free from physical suffering be free from mental suffering. May they be well and happy. May they live in peace. May all the beings in all the worlds be free from anger Be free from evil Be free from jealousy Be free from physical suffering be free from mental suffering May they be well and happy May they live in peace May all the beings live in peace Live in peace Live in peace Sadhu 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 Now children, we have come to the session of good deeds, where we watch and be happy and share the merits that has done by the children all around the world. So let's watch the good deeds that has done by the children and let's be happy with them. Namo Buddhaya Teruan Saranai. Namo Buddhaya. You have now come to the Good Deeds session where you read and watch the good deeds done by children all around the world. My name is Dinu Daham and today I'm here with Devanga. Namo Buddhaya. My name is Devanga. Today we'll be watching the good deeds done by Dinu Daham Upasaka and Nelini Upasika. The first meritorious deed was done by Dinu Daham Upasaka from Toronto, Canada. He has sent a beautiful video presentation about Vesak Full Moon Poya Day and the meaningful events that happened on that day. Let's watch his presentation. Vesak Full Moon Poya Day What is Vesak Full Moon Poya Day? On Vesak Full Moon Poya Day, Buddhists all over the world commemorate events of significance. 
It is the day when the three very important events of our great teacher, the Supreme Buddha, happen. Number one, birth of the Gautama Supreme Buddha. Number two, the enlightenment of the Gautama Supreme Buddha. Number three, the passing away Parinibbana of our great teacher, the Supreme Buddha. Other significant events on Vesak Full Moon Poya Day. Buddha's third visit to Sri Lanka also took place on a Vesak Full Moon Poya Day. In the eighth year after enlightenment, Gautama Buddha visited Sri Lanka at the invitation of Naga King Mani Akika of Kalania. King Dutu Gemunu had initiated the construction work of Ruan Velisaya on a Vesak Full Moon Poya Day. He had made a statue of pure gold and had enshrined it in the Mahasaya with one drona of relics of the Supreme Buddha. King Devanampiyatissa was anointed for the second occasion on a Vesak full moon Poya day. He had been anointed earlier as the king of Lanka after embracing Buddhism emperor Dharmashoka had anointed him again. It was on the Vesak full moon Poya day exactly one year after the enlightenment that Sakyamuni Gautama Buddha performed the Yama Mahapalahara twin miracle in order to dispel the arrogance of his relatives. God Sumana Saman, who brought the Kiripalu tree from Savat Nura Jetavanaramaya to provide shelter to the Buddha during his second visit to Sri Lanka, accompanied him to Sri Lanka during his third visit to the country. On his invitation, the Buddha proceeded to Samantakuta where he placed his footprint which remains in full sanctity and is being worshipped by us with extreme devotion. How to Celebrate Vesak in a Meaningful Way Vesak Day Observation Take Two Forms Amisa Puja and Pratipati Puja. Amisa Puja includes offerings including alms of food to the Buddha and his followers, Mahasanga, and lay disciples Upasaka and Upasika. This is done by way of Dansa. Food donations are made to poor people, travelers, or passerbys and animals. Devotees engage in meditation and observe higher precepts. They do many different meditations such as Buddha Anusati meditation, breathing meditation, loving kindness meditation, and impermanence meditation. They do Paritha chanting. Many Buddhists commence Vesak by observing the eight precepts, Atasil, and some devotees observe ten precepts imitating the great Arahants. By observing the eight precepts, one determines to foster good conduct and develop self discipline thus refraining from engaging in any wrongdoings as described in the precepts. A significant part of Vesak involves visiting a stupa to offer flowers, incense, candles, and drinks, gilampasa. These are symbolic acts that are conducted by devotees to pay respect to our great teacher, the Supreme Buddha, and his teachings. Devotees can gain enormous merit by doing these meritorious actions during the Vesak full moon Poya day. We can prepare Kiripidu, milk rice, and offer to our great teacher, the Supreme Buddha, or a Bodhi tree, reflecting upon the great qualities of the Buddha. However, as evening falls, houses, streets, and designated areas take on a vibrant note with countless pandals, thorang lanterns, and dansa. Families and friends take to the streets to tour around the city and see Vesak. In Sri Lanka on Vesak Poya Day, people make pandals, thorang, on the street and many people gather to watch it. Thorang are large structures with picture panels elaborately decorated with colored electric bulbs that are lit in a sequence to form vibrant patterns. Pandals depict stories from the life of the Lord Buddha. During Vesak Poya, devotees make Vesak lanterns in different shapes, bucket, lotus, stupa, and many other creative shapes, and they are especially made with bamboo sticks and tissue paper of various shades. We illuminate the Vesak lanterns to pay homage to our great teacher. 
the Supreme Buddha during the Vesak Poya days. During Vesak Poya days, there are stalls that are set up in the spirit of giving and sharing, which are meritorious values associated with Buddhism. Dansela or free food stalls are set up in public places and people queue up patiently for their turn. The organizers wait by the side of the road and flag down passing vehicles and people to offer them food, which can range from rice and curry to noodles and to herbal drinks, ice cream, iced coffee, and many other food items. Dear Dhamma friends, make the determination from this day on to celebrate Vesak correctly. Remember how our teacher came to this world on Vesak day attained enlightenment, and passed away into Parinibbana. Do these meritorious actions with the pure intention of honoring our great teacher, the Supreme Buddha, and remember the good result in happy minds that will come back to you in good ways. Each Vesa determined to practice the Buddha's teachings diligently so you can attain true happiness in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, Sadhu Merit Sharing I share all the merits I collected by making this presentation with Pindot Lakusami Nansa and all the monks and nuns in the Mahameo Nava monasteries and around the world. I would also like to share merits with my parents, teachers, and Dhamma friends. May you all realize the Four Noble Truths in the Skautama Buddha's dispensation. May everyone be well and happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Many merits for listening to my presentation. Theruan Sarnai, Namo Buddhaya. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Many merits to the Nudaha Mupasaka for sending this marvelous and informative presentation about Vesak Full Moon Poya Day. We all celebrated Vesak in the month of May, and we learned a lot of new facts about Vesak from your presentation, such as the different significant events that happened. In Sri Lanka, children celebrate Vesak in many different ways. We rejoice in your merits. You can also create short 1-2 to two minute presentations or videos about any Dhamma topic or any meritorious deed you have done. You can then send them to our email address. We can share them with the whole world and rejoice in that merit. The next meritorious deed was done by Nelini Upasika. She has sent a presentation about how to meditate properly. We all can see the presentation and we can meditate peacefully. Let's see the presentation she sent. How do you meditate properly? You need to sit in a comfortable posture and relax your body. Begin meditating. You can do the breathing meditation, Buddha Anasiti meditation, the loving kindness meditation, or any meditation you know. Your mind will go from thought to thought thinking different things. Bring your mind back to the meditation and again, focus on the meditation. Do not give up meditating. Keep on trying to do it every day. I share merits with Lokuswami Mahansa, Mirabdhamma Swami Mahansa, and all the monks and nuns all around the world. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Many merits to Nelani Upasika for sending this marvelous presentation to teach us how to meditate in a proper manner and earn enormous merits for our lives. We all rejoice in your great meritorious deed. If you have any photos of any meritorious deeds you have done, you can send them to our email address, which will appear on the screen. We will all rejoice in your good deeds and we can share them with the whole world. Today we watch many good deeds done by children all around the world. May you also have the opportunity to send your good deeds to our email address. These meritorious deeds will help to propagate the Dhamma and help others to do meritorious deeds as well. We rejoice in all your good deeds. The whole world rejoices in them too. 
May all of us have the opportunity to realize the Four Noble Truths in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. There one Sadhu, Namo Buddha. Namo Buddhaya. You have now come to the World News and the Buddha's Great Message Session. We we'll read the news that happened around the world and what lessons we can learn from these news according to the Supreme Buddha's teachings. My name is Subodha and today I am here with Dinara. Some days we say I had a very bad day. Sometimes we say I had a really good time. When you have a bad day, you get upset. When you have a good day, we feel happy. But what we should understand is, things are not under our control. Now, let's see the news. A huge container ship that has been stuck across the Suez Canal for almost a week has been freed from the shoreline, officials say. The Ever Given has been blocking one of the world's busiest trade routes forcing companies to reroute ships and causing long tailbacks. Traffic would resume once the ship is moved to a waiting area in a wider section of the canal, the authority said. A total of 367 vessels are waiting to pass through. This human life is a mixture of happiness and suffering. There are eight worldly conditions that revolve around the world. And the world revolves around these eight worldly conditions. What eight? Gain, loss, fame, disrepute, blame, praise, happiness, suffering, or pain. We should face those eight worldly conditions with a confident mind. The secret for this is knowing and understanding of things as they really are. Things that we are experiencing around us are impermanent. If something is impermanent, and they are subject to suffering. If something is suffering, that is not under our control. So my dear Dhamma friends, try to understand the true nature of this life. Namo Buddhaya. My name is Janara. Our human life is unpredictable like fruit hanging in a tree. Some people face accidents and die so soon. Others live longer. Do you know the reason for this? My dear Dhamma friends, it is because of the actions we have done by our body, speech, and mind. Today, I am going to share another story that has happened in Indonesia. Firefighters in Indonesia are working to put out a massive fire that has broken out at one of the country's largest oil refineries. The fire broke out at the Bolongan refinery run by state oil firm Petrovina at 12.45 a.m. local time on Monday. At least five people are injured and around 950 residents have been evacuated to safety. A handful of people have been reported missing. The cause of the fire still remains unclear. These dangers can come into our lives at any time. We are powerless over what happens in our lives and in the world around us. But how we respond to them is within our control. Therefore, my dear Dhamma friends, have a strong determination to do good actions from your body, speech, and mind. Also try to understand the impermanent nature and prepare your mind for it. We will see you all next week. Teruan Sarnai Namo Buddha.
now children we have come to the session of paritta chanting so today we are going to chant angulimala piritta so turn to page 171 of our uh, pali english mahamevnava paritta chanting book that's where we find the angulimala paritta so today we are going to chant this piritta First of all, let's pay homage to the Supreme Buddha. Say with me. Namo tasse bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavato arhato Samma Sambuddhasse Sadhu 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 Chant with me, children. Parittang yang bhanantasse Nisinnathan dhuvanam Udakampi vinaseti Sabmeva parissayam Sutina gabha vuttanang yancha sadheti tankhane thera sanguli malas lokanatena bhasitam kapattai mahatejang parittang tang bhanamahe even the water that is used to wash the seat which Arahant Angulimala sat on and recited this paritta that water can end all sufferings if a pregnant mother suffers from any pain she will be well and be strong enough to stand instantly now we shall recite that very powerful paritta taught by the Buddha to Arahant Angulimala, which will hold its power for an eon. Yatohang bhagini ariyaya jatiya jato na bhijanami Sanchicca panang jivita voro peta Tena sacchena sotite ho tu sotiga bhasati Sister, from the day I was born In the noble birth which leads to supreme nibbana From that day on I am not aware of myself killing any living beings deliberately. By this truth, may you be well. May the delivery of your child be peaceful. Yato hang bhagini ariyaya jatiya jato na bhijanami. Sanchicca panang jivita voro peta Tena sacchena sotite ho tu sotiga bhasati Sister, from the day I was born In the noble birth Which leads to supreme nibbana From that day on I am not aware of myself killing any living beings deliberately. By this truth, may you be well. May the delivery of your child be peaceful. Yato hang bhagini ariyaya jatiya jato na bhijanami. Sanchicca panang jivita voro peta Tena sacchena sotite ho tu sotiga bhasati Sister, from the day I was born In the noble birth 
which leads to supreme nibbana from that day on i am not aware of myself killing any living beings deliberately by this truth may you be well may the delivery of your child be peaceful sadu 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 now we have come to the final session of this uh, middle of the program to the children it is time for paying gratefulness and paying gratitude for the sponsoring families to this mirror of dhamma pro- program today this mirror of dhamma program is sponsored by mr udara virakorn and mrs prabhanjali ranasinghe from united states of america to bless their son who celebrated the 10th birthday uh, our adita puta adita virakorn puta uh, who celebrated his uh, 10th birthday on 28th of uh, june in this month So first of all let's share all the merits that we gain today with all the gods who protect this uh, Gautam Buddha's dispensation and all the gods who live in this sacred place may all the gods rejoice in this merit and may they be well and happy may they live long and may all the gods protect the members of uh, Mr Udara Virakorn and Mr Prabhanjali Ranasinghe's family and may all the gods rejoice in this merit and may they be well and happy may they live long and may they realize the four noble truths in this gautam buddha's dispensation and let's share all the merits with uh, our loku swami mahase who showed us the path to collect these merits and also children let's share all the merits that we gain today especially with Adita Virakorn Puta who celebrated his 10th birthday on 28th of uh, June may Adita Puta rejoice in this marriage and may he be well and happy may they, may he live long and may his education become successful and may his good hopes become true and may he realize the four noble truths in this Gautam Buddha's dispensation and specially let's share all the merits with uh, the brothers uh, and brother and sister of Aditya Puta Onita Virakorn Subhani Virakorn and the cousins Sajana Kankanike Metuja Kankanike Dinadi Kankanike Senon Virakorn Shanaya Virakorn Namurana Singh Vinodra Vinodra Dadapattu and the children who attend to the kids dhamma program done by Mr. Uh, Swami Nasir from America Uh, Seha, Siluni, Yevin, Sayul, Gimi, Sugati, Senadi and Tenu. May all the children who join to this Dhamma program rejoice in this marriage and may they live long, may they live a happy life and may their education become successful, may their good hopes become true, may they realize the four noble truths in this Gautam Buddha's dispensation. And specially let's share the merits that we gain today with the sponsoring uh, family mr udara virakorn and mrs prabhanjali ranasinghe may they rejoice in this merit and may they be well and happy may they live long may their good hopes become true and may they realize the four noble truths in this gautam buddha's dispensation and also children we especially like to share merits with the uh, shraddha media group who gave me a big help to make this uh, program a success especially uh, to amitaya chamindaya madhukumalli um, yuresh dinet kavish and ravish and all the shraddha media crew rejoice rejoice in this merit and may they be well and happy may they live long may their good hopes become true and may they realize the four noble truths in this gautam buddha dispensation And also children let's share all the merits that we gained today with uh, all the children who watched this uh, mirror of dhamma program today 
May all of you rejoice in this merit and may you be well and happy. May you live low. May your education become successful. May your good hopes become true. And may you realize the four noble truths in this Gautam Buddha's dispensation. So hope you enjoy this program. So let's meet in the next week with another great teaching of our great teacher, Supreme Buddha. Namo Buddhaya, Kiruvan Samadhi.